Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. I'm in Hyde Park. Behind me is the memorial to John Hanning Speak. Um, so this little obelisk records um, Speak, uh, who was born in 1827 in Devon and is well known for uh, exploring, exploring the interior of Africa. As it says here, the inscriptions, Victoria, Nyanza and the Nile. So um, there was much debate as where the source of the Nile was. For centuries Europeans had wondered and he established his Lake Victoria, although that wasn't, it wasn't universally accepted by the time he died in 1862. The memorial is 1864 um, and uh, going to uh, Lake Nyanza as well. So uh, Speak was born in Devon. In 1827, that's a county in the southwest of England, um, brought up in a in a middle class family. At the age of 17, he won a commission in um, to the to the army of the East India Company. Uh, so the East India Company was only wound up in 1858 after the defeat of the Indian Mutiny, or as people in India prefer to call it, the first War of National Liberation. Um, so the India East India Company had its own army until then. The British Army was also in India. Sometimes the East India Company would be at war. The British Army would not. Sometimes they're both at war on the same on the same side. So uh, the um, East India Company army turned into the Indian Army later on, uh, and it was well paid um, for the for the British officers. Um, India was seen as a hardship post. A, a man could spend his entire career in the British Army, could spend 20 years and never see action. But in the Indian Army, they would definitely fight. Um, so it was also danger money because. Um, I don't want to go through the whole history of British India, but <clears throat> the <clears throat> East India Company's branch was expanding and expanding. Just a few um, po uh, ports on the coast back in the 17th century, but by the mid-19th century it was expanding rapidly. So they were fighting on and off a lot. Um, anyway, so uh, he went out there and he was uh, commissioned to the 46th Bengal Native Infantry. Uh, he certainly learnt, learnt Hindustani, I suppose we'd call it Hindi now. I'm not sure if he learnt Bengali, presumably if they were Bengali soldiers had to learn that one too. But he had a gift for languages. And he fought in the first Anglo-Sikh war, as in uh, they were fighting the Punjab, the Punjab being an independent country at the time. And um, the Maharaja of the Punjab controlled um, a much larger territory than you might imagine. It's not just the Indian state, which is called the Punjab today, uh, it included um, what uh, would now, we now call Haryana and indeed the Pakistani Punjab, and at times has stre had stretched deep into what's now Afghanistan, or, or even through that, that, that Pakistani province, which we now call the Khyber Pukhtunkhwala. Um, anyhow, so uh, he was a, a man of great valour and resource. But uh, after a few years, he was fed up with the, um, with the army of the East India Company and decided to leave. He met Richard Burton, uh, who came from the same part of England and uh, was, had also been an officer in that, that same army. But uh, Burton was more of a polyglot than, than, um, than Speak was. I filmed at Burton's grave, uh, the first, uh, the first um, infidel to get to Mecca for centuries, certainly lived to tell the tale. But um, so he and Speak, they traveled to Aden together on the southern coast of the Arabian Peninsula. It's, it's now in Yemen. But so that was a, a British ruled port right up until about 1969. They requested permission to go to, to Somalia. That was refused. It was seen as too dangerous. So Speak wanted to collect some plants as samples, bring them home to his family's garden. They went anyway. They traveled extensively in, in, in um, uh, Abyssinia. We now call it Ethiopia in the mountains. When he'd been in India, he'd traveled um, through the Himalayas um, to the foot of Mount Everest. He travelled into Tibet. He was extraordinarily intrepid, a man of absolutely boundless energy. So um, uh, he was perhaps too venturesome for his own good in Somalia. Um, Somalia being, being fully independent at the time, and um, they were they were not keen on uh, Western interlopers, um, suspecting that these uh, Occidentals might wish to conquer them. Well, in that they were not mistaken. But um, one time, one at night, their camp was uh, was attacked by 200 um, spear wield wielding Somalis. Now, the Somalis, did they perceive them as, as, as invaders rather than simply explorers? Well, they were armed. I say, well, we're armed for our own protection. Well, the Somalis might say, well, you think you're coming certainly to spy out the land with a view to an invasion. And indeed, Italy and the United Kingdom did annex Somalia a generation later. Um, so um, he, he hid under a tent flap during this um, skirmish. Uh, Richard Burton thought he was cowardly. Was he, was he um, scarpering? Was he concealing himself instead of fighting, but then he manfully charged forward and according to their account slew several of the foe. Um, but he, he was stabbed, the other guy was stabbed, um, Burton was stabbed, they had obviously a, a few retainers helping them fight. 
But um, some of this seems like invention to me. That anyway, he was he was captured. Speak. You think they would have put him to death on the spot? But anyway, tied up, stabbed several more times. How is he still alive? But then, with bound hands, manages to do a sort of two-fisted punch of his uh, assailant and run off with, with with tied up hands and get back to Burton and the other bloke. Anyway, um, Burton would be wounded. So you think their wounds could easily get infected? They didn't bleed to death. It's a miracle. Um, so they, they got back to the coast and they sailed away. So he went on a number of expeditions through the interior of Africa. Um, and they had to hire local guides. Um, and uh, they, there was one guy called Sidi Mubarak um, Bombay, if I got it right, who was not from Bombay, who was from what we now call Malawi, but had been captured as a child. The Ishmaelites were often um, going into the interior of Africa and kidnapping people, taking them off into servitude and shipping them to the Arabian Peninsula or even to, to India. Remember, India uh, slavery wasn't abolished in India completely to the 1840s. And so although this chap was African, he spoke uh, Hindustani, he spoke Swahili, as, as well as a few bantu two languages so um, he was incredibly useful to them so uh, Mr Bombay was a godsend to them and he was their interpreter on their expedition um, so I'm not going to relate all the, the tales about their expeditions partly because I can't remember them I get rather confused between um, his many peregrinations uh, in uh, the African continent but uh, they got to Lake Victoria now Speak was convinced that this was the source of the Nile but wasn't so sure they'd clashed sometimes personality clash but you can imagine you have to spend all uh, time all time with this guy under very physically demanding circumstances they're tropical diseases it's sweltering hot there's a danger of being bitten by a poisonous snake they're heavy loads to be carried uh, can they control the the um, bearers they've hired to to help them to carry their things are they going to get lost are they going to be uh, killed by some um, hostile people so it's an extraordinarily um, stressful situation and uh, they squabbled a lot they were thousands of miles from home and there was obviously they, they were had to do this completely independent of auxiliary aid if something went wrong you couldn't make a phone call to be evacuated um, uh, and so they said, okay, it's, it's the source of the Nile. They'd seen some other, other lakes as well they weren't sure about. Um, Speak had been very ill, um, was only partially sighted by this stage. Uh, Burton was very ill, had to be carried much of the way. But anyway, they, they went back to Aden and um, they supposedly agreed not to uh, reveal that this was the source of the Nile until they both got back to the United Kingdom. But then Speak started saying that no, they started telling people that it was the source of the Nile. It was announced with great fanfare. Um, Burton took this very badly indeed, felt that his friend had reneged on his promise, so he was no longer his friend. There had been some simmering discontentment between them for a while. Speak used to love um, um, hunting game. Now, he was providing um, fresh meat for the expedition, but was he just doing it not for the pot, just for sheer glory or for fun? And this was perhaps distracting from the main purpose of the expedition. Burton um, uh, didn't like going shooting, and he was the more academic of the two. Uh, he was a hyper-polyglot. Speak was not quite such an extraordinary linguist as Richard Burton. This is not Richard the Burton, the Welsh actor. This is Richard Burton, the um, the English explorer. Um, you might say, explorer, why can you say that there are people been there for thousands of years? Yes, that's true. But they got to what we can now call Malawi long before Malawi and got to the United Kingdom. I mean, the Malawians didn't know the UK existed until Britishers got there. Um, anyhow, so uh, Speak came back and he was um, in his family home in Wiltshire. And there was uh, he was meant to actually have a debate with, with Burton and a formal debate. Uh, I think even that day, and Speak was going to argue that Lake Victoria really is the source of the Nile, and Burton was going to say, no, it's not. I'm not sure if he had any idea what it was, but say, we just know that's not it. Obviously, but, uh, Burton was wrong. But uh, then there was a, a hunting incident, and uh, Speak was actually shot with his own gun, accidentally, by himself. How, how would you accidentally do that? Or would he lent his gun to someone else? Anyway, that was the end of him in 1862. So he died at age 37. Uh, it was an extraordinarily action-filled life. A very, very venturesome chap uh, who certainly had itchy feet. But Burton lived on for a few more years. Speak never married. There's, there's a town outside Liverpool named Speak, but I think his family came from there centuries before. Speak is named in honor of him. There are a couple of things named in honor of him. I think there's a Mount Speak, um, and there's a little tortoise called Speak, things like that. You should see the Mountains of the Moon, this 1990 film um, about the friendship the rivalry and the eventual enmity between um, uh, Speak and um, Richard Burton. So this was put up by the Royal Geographical Society, and the Royal Geographical Society, you can't see, it's about a mile that away, and by public subscription. So that's enough about um, uh, John Hanning Speak. So please follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and choose Lessons With Me online in History, Politics, Religious Studies, English Foreign Language, English Literature, 
uh, law, French, that's it. And I help people writing dissertations and theses, or indeed I translate from French, Spanish, Italian, uh, German, Romanian and Russian. What else do I do? Oh, well, I'm a politi political analyst. I'm a tour guide in London whenever tourists are allowed back. Right. Toodaloo.